You are listening to the Oracle of Light podcast. I'm your host, Shauna DeMellon. I have one of my favorite earth angels here with me today. I have Laurel. Um, I will, I'll share briefly with you. Uh, it was, I'm not even sure how many years ago, uh, you were doing a live on Facebook and I was listening to your live and I just found your work and, and was on your website and looking at everything that you were doing. And on this live, you stopped and you said, I'm not sure who this is for, but I feel like I need to bring forward this message. And the message that came through was it went right through my heart. And I sat here crying and I was just like, Oh, Oh my gosh, what was that? And then I booked a session with you soon after that. And you literally brought me back to life with connecting with my Jack on the other side. And you have just been, I've shared this story with thousands because it's just, it's touched my heart. And I am so excited that you're here today and for everyone to experience you and, and get to know you and everything that you offer and everything that you are. So thank you for being here. Thank you so much. And, and thank you for all you're doing as well. What a blessing that we get to share this journey together and this moment and uh, share all this beautiful heart, angelic energy together. Yes, I love it. And I just, my hope is that everyone who listens will he will feel that as well, because it's just, it's palpable. It's just, it's like, woo, this is so beautiful. Now, we were just chatting about where we were going to start today. And so I would love for you to share your your beautiful experience with us. Sure. Yeah, so what we were talking about, because often when, um, so I'm an angelic practitioner, and I love working with the angels. And I think conceptually, we all have a sense on the angels, and we get Christmas cards with pictures of angels on them, and they're a lovely thought, Right. But what really drew me to working with angels was this experience of divine love. I was going to say unconditional love. And I don't like to use that term too much because in the human realm, we say, I love unconditionally until we don't. There's a polarity to unconditional, even unconditional love. And, and you listen, I was a muggle for a long time. I um, was a skeptic. I didn't believe in this work. And I had a series of psychic experiences. I won't go that far back into my history. But but the moment of the unconditional love happened to me in a dream. It was a visitation in the year 2000. And at the time I was working in a corporate job. I felt like I was middle aged. I hadn't met my beloved. I was overweight. And the the experience I was having of myself was one where I felt unfulfilled. I kept thinking my life was going to start at some point, mm. but it hadn't quite started yet. Yeah. I, I was my inner world. I, I just kind of kept seeing my flaws and my shortcomings. And, and I think so many of us have these experiences yeah. and I woke up in a dream. So, so I think of this more as a visitation and, and above my bed, there was, I call it the cutest boy I've ever seen, but he was a man, but that's just my vernacular. And as soon as I saw him, I knew that I loved everything that he was and that he loved everything that I was beyond time and space. I've never experienced anything wow. like that before. And I started sobbing mm -hmm. and I threw my arms around him and I said, where have you been? I miss you. And he said, you decided to do this one alone. Mm -hmm. And I said, I changed my mind, come back. <laughs> and, and I had these um, mirrored closet doors in my bedroom in real life. And he took me to these doors, which became a portal. And he pointed at my reflection and he said, you're so much more than this. This is not who you are. And I didn't understand and I'm crying. And he said, this is not who you are pointing to my reflection. You're so much more than this. And I knew what he was saying is I was not my beliefs, my shortcomings, my, my wounds, like there was more to me. And then he took me to visit different lifetimes where we had served as healers. It, it was a remarkable experience. And I woke up alone in my bed sobbing because it awakened in me this deep sense of homesickness. Yeah. 
like for whatever life was that I wasn't experiencing. And this is normally where I would, I would, you know, if this, if I were writing a book, I'd be like, and then everything changed. And, and that's not at all true. Because change takes time. Yes. But it was my first visceral experience of this concept of divine love where everything that we are is loved. There's no corner, no dusty little basement that is unworthy or unloved. Mm. And so for the next year and beyond, I started my journey of discovery and healing. And um, I'd asked Shauna, I was like, who who are your listeners? And, And she spoke of all of you so lovingly. And she says, Um, They are just such beautiful people awakening to their own love, their own gifts and abilities. And, And I think if we're lucky in life, we get to encourage each other because we all get lost. All of us. We all have that voice in our head that tells us terrible lies about ourselves and we get lost in it. And, and, and that was really, that moment was a catalyst moment for me. And, and it took me years to sort of learn what that would mean. But that's ultimately what drew me to the angels because I experienced angelic love from that place mm-hmm. of all-encompassing. Yeah. And so I now spend my life helping others connect with that experience. Mm-hmm. So... So that's my origin story, Shauna. <laughs> I love it. It was beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that. That is so beautiful. There was a, a podcast that I listened to about a year ago. It was Peter Crone. And in it, he says, there is this identity that we believe is who we are that actually isn't who we are. And that the work then becomes figuring out who we really are, like who we are at our deeper, the deepest sense of us, our true authentic self, whatever you want to call it. Yes. And letting go of everything that that we think is us or that we bought as, you know, perhaps the lie that it is us. And and then he went on to talk about, you know, when we're born up until, you know, those first seven years, we're in theta brainwave states. And we are literally sponges soaking up everything, the good, the bad, the whatever. And it was interesting because one of the listeners said, well, why would we choose to do that? <laughs> mm. And maybe you could maybe you can talk a little bit about this. You know, I mean, Earth is it's a big school and we are here to expand our soul and to learn and to grow and to experience the duality of, well, I really don't like that, but I'd really love to have that instead. And and in finding who you are again, or reconnecting with that part of you. And for a lot of people, I don't think they've ever really connected into that part of them. And it's so profound when you start to catch glimmers of it, or you start to have, you know, days where you feel so joyous, and you just feel like everything is good. And you just, it's like you are just fully embodying who you really are. And so it's it's fascinating because yeah, a lot of people say to me, well, why would we choose our parents? And why would we choose to have these experiences? <laughs> and it's just Yeah. Well we can yeah. absolutely talk about that. Yeah. I'm wondering, because you know how I work. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm wondering though if we can do a little detour for a second because I feel like the angels are coming in for a giant healing and clearing right now. Yeah. Like it's right here in the heart chakra. Yeah. It almost feels like there is, I, I don't ever like to affirm that anyone is blocked. So please, if you're listening, don't take it that way. Yeah. But we carry so many of us experience the world through our hearts. Yes. And it feels as if someone who's listening, maybe more than one, maybe it's us, I don't know. There is such deep grief yep. and outrage in the heart right now. Um, and I just feel like I want to say who, to whoever this is, if you are angry with God right now, it is okay. God, God can receive all of your rage and your anger and your upset and your grief. God can love you where you are right now. Yeah. And to really 
just let the angels come in and love you where you are right now. You don't have to transmute this energy. You don't have to become something different. You don't have to figure it out. You don't have to resolve it. You in this grief, you in this rage, you where you are right now, God and the angels meet you where you are and you don't have to change anything to receive this love. So that it, feel, it feels so specific right now. It feels like there's just like this block right here and to just let the angels come and, and, and weep with you and be with you and, and know that you don't have to transmute or heal or become something else in order to receive this. So I don't know who that is for, but I almost couldn't go on until that message came through. So Thank you'll me. find out later who that was yes, for. Absolutely. Oh my goodness. That was so beautiful. Thank you. Wow. That is so beautiful. And I love the message that you don't have to do anything to receive it. You don't have to be something different or or do something different or, or, or forgive, or you don't have to jump through all of these hoops just to receive that. It's there for you. You don't, you know, you were asking like, why would we do this to ourselves? <laughs> <laughs> Essentially, yes. Who thought this was a good idea? Why Why did I sign up for this? And, and I, listen, I think there are a thousand million answers to that question. And I don't want to pretend like I know, I know for <laughs> sure that this is it. But I will share with you my belief system, yep. which is, and this was another complete game changer for me that also happened in the year 2000. Year 2000 was the year of my awakening. And listen, at this point on people's spiritual journeys, I think we have all heard some form of what I'm going to say. We are divine beings having a human experience. Yes. So we're not human beings with a soul. We're souls having a human experience. And, and for me, this was a game changer. Because I had always believed I was a human being with a soul. And my soul was over there somewhere. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if I lived a good life, I would get to reunite with my soul. And then I would be whole. I don't know why that's what I believed. Yeah. So the concept that my soul self, my higher self, my, my guides call it the greater expanse of all that you are, is whole and complete and present and available and that is the truth of who I am and an extract of my greater self my personality self incarnated went through the portal of amnesia to become laurel to forget who I am so that I can learn all over again yeah. why would I do this well you know I will tell you you've met my guides Josephus and sometimes they're a little cheeky yes and one, one time they answered this. I just thought this was a funny answer. Um, they're like, why do people pay money to go into corn mazes and get lost? <laughs> right? There's the journey of discovery, of experience. And, and, and perhaps on a, a, a deeper note, we have come here to contribute and evolve the consciousness of mankind. Yes. So I do not believe for most of us that we are of the earth. Mm -mm. I believe that we are greater spiritual beings who come here to have an earthly experience. But the consciousness of mankind, species of mankind, the, um, ex the, the, con the consciousness of planet earth, they are their own entities. And so we come here to contribute to the evolution of consciousness of mankind. Mm -hmm. So when we incarnate, we take on ancestral lines of energy, societal messaging. We're here to evolve consciousness. And as I once heard someone say, the only way to evolve consciousness is by embodying it. Mm -hmm. So we take on all this stuff, our family stuff, our triggers, our all of this stuff. We have experiences. If we're fortunate, we hold those experiences up to the light and evolve and heal if we're fortunate. And sometimes we don't. 
We are all unsuccessful at that as, as well. But we're evolving the collective that is the consciousness of mankind on planet Earth. And so all of it goes into the totality. It's like we are all drops of, of, of water that is the ocean. We are the ocean and we're individual drops of water. Mm -hmm. So here we are. And that's why so many of us get homesick mm -hmm. because this realm can feel really harsh and unfriendly and weird sometimes. And it's also magical and beautiful and extraordinary as well. It's a realm of shadow and light. And so here we are. And so here we are. <laughs> I love that. Are. I love that. It's, it's, it's a beautiful way to explain it because as I mentioned earlier, I mean, I work with a lot of families who have lost children. Yeah. And so there are, even as a medium, I don't have all of those answers. And even with my son, Jack, when I transition from this physical body, there will be a conversation with God <laughs> because I, right. Like it's just, I don't, I don't have access to everything because that was part of my journey. And that was, yeah, it, it's made me who I am today. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and it's interesting too, because I always tell people, you know, people say, well, why would you want to connect? Why would you want to connect with angels? Why would you want to connect with loved ones on the other side? Why would you want to connect into that? And I always tell them because they are pure 100% unconditional love. And when we are able to connect and receive that, we're playing in such beautiful, beautiful energies. And as you mentioned, it's this is the earth is earth is very difficult. It's very difficult. And there's so much going on in the collective. And so thank you for that reminder. I remember years ago, um, being in a meditation and my guides had said, you're here to uplift humanity. And I just sat there and I said, oh, <laughs> it was like, well, I kind right? of <laughs> that can seem so big. It can seem so big. Yeah. And um, and you may have heard me share this story before. It's I share it so often because it's still it's I still think it's a wonderful drop of light. Um, when there's this very common piece of prose that is often attributed to Emerson, but he didn't write it. And I'm gonna paraphrase it now. But I first heard it when I was 18 years old and I was shopping for a greeting card for a friend. And the piece of prose on the card said something along the lines of to know that one life has breathed easier because you have lived this is to succeed beautiful at 18 years old i had no idea what that would mean but it felt so sacred and monumental mm -hmm. that oh my god could, could someone's life be better because i existed that just seemed like this unbelievable invitation into something yes and and i think which is so appropriate right now, it is so overwhelming when we look at what's happening in the world and how can I possibly make a difference. But mm -hmm. if you will look at it from this perspective of drops of the ocean, can you be kind to the person who's checking you out at the grocery store? Can you let someone merge in traffic on a really busy freeway? Mm -hmm. Right? It, it's like, can we... It, it, and that might not feel like it's making any difference, but to the other drop of water that is next to you, it might mean the difference between a perfectly awful day and a tolerable one. Yes. Like we forget that we have impact and the ego gets caught up in the grandiosity. Yeah. But to know that one life has breathed easier because you exist. Yes. God bless you and thank you for that. And and we can do that every single day. Absolutely. I think that is so beautiful. I often think of the ripple effect. Yes. I, the butterfly's I think, wings, right? Exactly. And I think, you know, using the analogy of, of, you know, letting somebody in, you know, who's who's had maybe an incredibly difficult day, letting them in in traffic, and then you give them a wave and in that moment they give you the wave back and they think okay, okay, I can do this. And then they're able to go home, to their family in a different state. And maybe that has a ripple effect there. And it just, it's sort of, I think of it as, as planting seeds as well. It's like, yeah. it's just planting seeds of, of, of grace 
and kindness. And someone said to me once, they said, well, you know, what are your core values? And I said, well, I won't go too deep into what that looks like for me. But I said, number one is kindness. I'm I'm on this journey to be as kind as I can to myself. And you mentioned that earlier, right? We, we can we can carve ourselves up pretty good. <laughs> and then being as kind as I can be to other people, whether or not they can receive that or they even want that, that's okay. Just knowing that I can give that. I used to go for a walk every morning down by the river and I would look at everyone I met and say, good morning and hello. And the people that wouldn't make eye contact or receive it, I would say, maybe they'll see it later. Maybe they'll remember it a little bit later or it'll just go wherever it needs to go. So I love that. And I love I love the drops analogy as well, because I think I think so many people believe that we're all separate. I'm separate from whatever I believe in. I'm separate from myself, as you mentioned, right? Like uh, I had the idea that the bigger me, my higher self is up there and that this is just a little piece of that. <laughs> and so I love that you brought that up because it's like, it's thinking, well, I'm separate. I'm less than, I don't have all of it. I just, mm, 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 mm. and then, you know, thinking that, I am the beliefs that I've picked up along the way. I am those decisions as I as I shared with you earlier, you know, yes. deciding that I was going to be heartbroken forever after I lost Jack. It's fascinating when you start to courageously step into the arena with it. I think it takes such a level of of courage to even be willing to look at our stuff. Yes. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. to have profound compassion for our humanness. Yes. You know, one of my teachers said, and I think it's so brilliant. She says, it's one thing to learn a spiritual principle. Mm -hmm. It can take a lifetime or lifetimes to learn to embody it. <laughs> yes. Right. Mm -hmm. So I know all of these things and I work with the angels and you know what? I am still an earth girl. I still get upset and scared and worried. I still get impatient with, the, I still can be that jerk in traffic that doesn't let somebody merge because yep. I'm mad about something else. Like, like we're all so human. Yep. So it's not about this perfection. It's not a polarity. It's a continuum of maybe overall ripple of my life be a good one. <laughs> and, yes. and maybe on, on the first Tuesday of every month, I don't quite succeed at that. Right. It's, <laughs> It's the totality of a life well lived, I think. Mm -hmm. I love that. I think that's so beautiful. Would you um, would you elaborate a little bit more um, on Josephus and and your your relationship with them? Can I call them them or who? Yeah. Yes, you can call them them. And I, um, I'm never quite sure how to, to talk about that. So yeah. so I channel a group of guides, Josephus and the Wisdom Council, that I distill down to Josephus. And I'm a direct voice channel, which means that I shift my energy and they join me and they speak through me, which can seem completely weird. I get it. Um, but it also can seem like me. Um, so, so I don't know what everybody else was doing in 2007 and 2008, but perhaps like me, you had watched The Secret and you were learning about um, Abraham Hicks and ask and it is given because basically anybody on a spiritual path of metaphysics back then, we were all consumed by this thing, <laughs> this phenomenon. Yes. And probably like many other people, I was like, I want to channel like mm -hmm. that is super cool. I think often uh, in metaphysics, right, we have um, we have gift envy. Yes. Like if someone else can talk to dead people, it's like, I want to talk to dead people. If yeah. someone else can see orbs, I want to see, you know, it's like, we, we all yeah. want, like, I want to know how to do that. And I, of course, probably like many other people said, I want to channel. That's so cool. And I was fortunate. I found a great channeling teacher. And in a meditation, I met the guide Josephus. Cause so at that point, Josephus was a him, not a they, right. I'm not talking about pronouns here. I just mean, mm -hmm. it wasn't a collective. It was a singular guide. Yeah. And he told me that he, I met him under the tree of knowledge in the meditation. And he told me that he worked in the, in the hall of wisdom and that I would be asking questions and he would go into the hall of wisdom and retrieve the records and bring the answers back to me. And I said, well, can I just go into the hall? He says, no, it would overwhelm you. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
And at that time, he said, I am just here for you. So please don't tell anyone else about me yet, because this is about us. And you can tell Wes. Wes at that time was my husband. He still is. I just mean we were married by then. And so I could tell Wes about it, but no one else. Mm -hmm. I thought, okay, okay. And then maybe like, I don't know, four or five months later, he came to me and he said, okay, you can now start introducing me to people. And what he said was, you can introduce me to people in a meditation and The important thing for them to know is that I am not here to be their guide, but sometimes being able to phone a friend and know who you're getting in touch with is helpful. And so they, you can sort of introduce them to me and then I'll hand them off to their team was was how he had explained it to me. And then a few months later, and this is not uncommon when people are learning to direct voice channel. I was in a meditation class that I was facilitating with a group of friends and we'd asked, I I want to go into all details. We'd asked a question. All of a sudden I felt Josephus, the collective come in. And I said to my friends, I said, you guys, I think I'm going to (laughs) channel. And there they were. Hello, we are here. And they spoke with more of an accent at that point, which they don't have anymore. And, um, and the way it is explained to me is Josephus, the guide is the personality that comes forward, but he always speaks in the we, because it is a collective. It is an ever changing collective that brings the message and the love through, because if I'm channeling for a group or for a person, their team is there. So so when I cha- when when I channel, and this is one of the beautiful things about direct voice channeling, is it gives the guides, the angels, an opportunity to bring their energy closer to physical world reality, where we can more easily receive it. Yes. So that divine love we've been talking about quite often when I am channeling, people get to have a very visceral experience of this love and compassion. Mm-hmm. Just, you know, there's this, there's this human experience. And I've heard so many people say this, my God, my angels must be so annoyed with me because they've given <laughs> me a piece of information and I'm not doing anything about it. Yep. I've been channeling Josephus since March of 2008. Mm-hmm. I have never, ever felt them get impatient with anyone about a question. Mm-hmm. They understand how challenging it is to be in this earthly incarnation separated from our greater expanse. Yeah. They, they get it. And, and um, they are patient and compassionate and loving. And they don't, they don't lose patience with us. They don't judge us. Mm-hmm. They don't, say things like, you know, you should get your butt up off the couch and do something about it. They're not, there's not, there's this, this, and especially with Josephus, the guide, he has had incarnations on earth. He knows what it is to be in this experience. And so just pure love comes Mm -hmm. through and pure guidance and, Mm -hmm. And so, so that's, that's been my journey with Josephus. It has um, distilled over the years. So it's very easy for me to drop into channeling them now. And, mm-hmm. and, and in many ways, I think when I'm channeling, it makes sound more like me than them, because I also access my greater soul now as I channel versus in the beginning, I think there may have been more of a gap between us. And I'm not saying I'm now a higher guide. I just mean... I think with any language, whatever you're learning, we enter a period of fluidity where we're not reaching so much for whatever it is we're trying to convey. And so over the years, there has been much more integration in consciousness when it comes to channeling than how I began in 2008. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. Thank you for sharing. I Every time that we we work together or, or any of the classes I've taken with you, and as soon as you say, well, let me go get Josephus, <laughs> it's just like, it's it's absolutely incredible to experience the energy and um, 
they're they're I won't say sarcastic, but they're just they're funny. They're cheeky. They're cheeky. Yes, they're funny. They're, they are funny, and it's just like okay. And it's I love that you you shared that um, the guy Josephus has had incarnations on Earth, so the patience to understand, you know, that we don't want to let that guy in in traffic because he's a big jerk. <laughs> and, you know, and I, will we'll- say, I, I will also say for anybody who is clairsentient and feeling the energy, they are with us right now. I'm getting like a hot flash. I'm like, okay, I know you guys are here. <laughs> they're, they're here, everyone. And so yeah. um, just if you're, if, if you're listening and, and they're not bound by time nor space. So if you're listening to this four years after it was recorded and you're like, but could I be feeling their energy? Yeah. yeah. And, and they're not going to come and, and do a flyby if you don't want them to. <laughs> but mm-hmm. if you were like, I want to feel some of that divine love, I would love that kind of energy. I just want you to know I'm feeling it coming through in such a big way for everybody who's listening right now. So even maybe just take a breath in and kind of put your hand over your heart and just say, hi, angels. Hey, angels, are you here? (laughs) Help. And and, and you can be very informal. I think one of the, the myths of working with angels is you somehow have to be profoundly reverent and speak to them in exalted tones and they're angels, they get it. And, and you can just be like, Hey, guys, what up? Help. (laughs) And they're there with you, right? So I just wanted to acknowledge that I really feel them coming in right now. And, and so for all of you listening, your prayers and your light, and they're with you right now, you don't have to sort of wait and book a session or anything like that. It's it's already infused in this broadcast. And Shauna, I mean, oh, my God, the guides and the love and the angels that you work with, always every episode is filled with this but I just want to acknowledge that there is like a um, there's a huge pool of light coming through this specific broadcast right now there is and and thank you and and absolutely acknowledging everyone who is here and it makes me emotional when I feel this level it's like my office is full like this there's standing room only like it's just oh my goodness thank you and what a beautiful gift and as you were mentioning, it doesn't matter when you listen to this podcast, it's that that beautiful energy will be there for you to receive however you would like to. And it's, wow, how beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I just, I'm, yeah, I just, you know, there are days, you know, my client days at the end of the day, I usually sit and and I think, thank you for allowing me to be, to be a part of that. Thank you Thank you for bringing that much beauty and joy to this reality. And yeah, to be able to sit in this and bask in it, even me, like I said, this morning I got up and I thought, <laughs> yes, yeah. this is so exciting. And I love what you said about, um, you don't have to do it a certain way. People are always asking me, well, you know, I joke with people that, you know, I have parking angels and they're like, what do you mean? I'm like, I always get fantastic parking everywhere I go. And they're like, what? How do you do that? You must have been doing it so long and you've taken classes and you've been certified and then da 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 da. And you're you're gifted. And it's like, mm-mm, how open and available are you? Because they're available for everyone. And it doesn't matter what your belief systems are. It doesn't matter if you know, you have never had a profound experience with an angel. It doesn't matter if you don't see them. A lot of people want to see them. And some of them look like little cherubs floating around, and some of them look like a column of light. And it's, I always tell people, you know, just how open and available are you? And if you're feeling guided toward the angels, then absolutely, they will come and they will play and they will, you know, weave their magic into your world. They're already here, right? They already support us all the time. And, yeah. you, you know, one of the ways I, I, I will describe, so because I think sometimes people get caught up in the mystical component of things, especially if they don't feel like I don't see, I don't know, I don't feel all the, you know, all that stuff. Yeah. Is the think of it this way. Imagine for a moment that there is a 24-7 broadcast of love for you. And there is a really easy way to imagine that. I think for many of us, we grew up listening to the radio Mm -hmm. right before Spotify and your own playlists and all that stuff. And, you know, on our car radios, we would twist the dial and, and pull up a radio station we wanted to listen to. And 
you went up the dial and down the dial and there were plenty of stations we never listened to. Yeah. But they were always playing just because you weren't listening. Doesn't mean that they weren't playing. Mm -hmm. So imagine taking your dial of consciousness and moving it up the dial a little bit to the angel channel (laughs) where there are messages of love and encouragement for you always. And it's just about opening your consciousness to connect with the most loving voice and presence you can imagine and using your imagination as a gateway to access the angels. Mm -hmm. I love that. We all have that ability. Yes. Each and every one of us. I love that. And it's funny, sometimes in sessions, I'll say things like, oh, there's a plethora of options and there are a myriad of different ways to look at things. (laughs) It's like, all right, that wasn't me. (laughs) What was that? That was awesome. (laughs) That was awesome. Awesome. It is awesome. And it's, it's, I find it so funny. And, you know, um, years ago when I first started doing readings, I would use Oracle cards, angel cards, and then it evolved and I didn't touch the cards. And it was just, you know, we're just channeling, we're just connecting into that energy, like you were saying, you know, sort of evolved. And there was one day, um, it was Archangel Michael came forward. He he's just he's just so lovely. And it was one of the one of the original decks that had they were the Archangel Michael deck. And on the back was an image. And this image looked like Fabio. It was this angel with this long blonde hair. And I remember sitting in a session and he said, I, I get the cards. And I so I, I would grab the deck and he would say, tell them that's what I look like. And I'm in my mind, I'm like, I'm not telling them that. What are you <laughs> doing? What are you doing? He's like, no, 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 no. Tell them that's what I look like. And I'm like, <sighs> so I'm like, he wants me to tell you this is what he looks like. And instantly their walls came down. And so I did that for a couple of years, probably thousands of readings where get the deck, show them that's what I look like. And it just, it helped people to sort of normalize it. Like it was like, oh, okay, okay. And then they were wide open to receiving. Again, it's just, again, I find the guides are so funny. And sometimes they come in and they say the strangest things. And sometimes, you know, they come in and they'll say shit, or they'll swear. And it's like, oh, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> it's just, just letting it be whatever it needs to be and whatever that person needs to hear. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So much I- love and wisdom comes through. And really patience, does. right? They model for us how to have self-compassion and patience and yeah, they really do. They really do. Now, would you share? I want, I'd love to talk about your deck. You have to tell us about your deck. Yes. So Shauna knows I just um, earlier this month introduced my own deck called the Earth Angels Oracle. Mm-hmm. I think just about any of us who have loved Oracle decks have perhaps entertained the dream of creating our own. And I'm no different than that and I have a deck I'd been using for many years since 2005 and um, the woman who authored it went through a profound spiritual shift and no longer endorses her old work and so I sort of had a, a I don't know kind of a weird relationship with it and I have many decks probably like everyone else I have dozens of them but I hadn't quite found my deck yeah. And so earlier this year, I was guided to create my own deck that is now available. And the readings from it are absolutely gorgeous. So it's the Earth Angels Oracle deck. Mm -hmm. And and perhaps some of you have heard of Mid Journey. I used Mid Journey, which is artificial intelligence, to, um, to create the artwork that is just so beautiful. For instance, we were talking about your higher self, your greater self, your soul self. This is the card for your higher self. I had never seen an image like this before until AI had created it for me. And to me, this speaks to your higher self. Like it's not separate from you. It's not unrelated to you. Oh, how beautiful. It is there with you. Mm -hmm. Right? And so another card that she just took my breath away 
the wise one. Mm. Like when she shows up in a reading, like feel into her energy. She is there to support you. So it just, this one, oh my God, eternal love. Oh, I love that. Wow. So it was an opportunity for me to create artwork in a way that had not been available to me before. Mm -hmm. And each piece of art told a story. Each piece of art brought forward a message. And so I crafted it together. And now I've got my Oracle deck, the Earth Angels Oracle. It has 70 cards. And um, would you like me to pull some cards for everybody? I was just going to say, I, I, you need to pull some cards. And I just want to say that we will have all of your information where they can they can find you and the deck and, and how they can order it. We'll have all of that in the show notes for everyone. So yes, absolutely. So, oh so I just want to invite everybody to put your energy into this reading, like just whatever it is you want to know, what your question is. Again, we're not bound by time nor space in this reading. So even if you're putting your request out there four years from now, it's all good. And let's ask, ooh, one jumped. Okay, so I don't know. Oh, oh, okay, well, they said keep shuffling. All right, I'll keep shuffling then. <laughs> I usually when there's a jumper, it's like, what was that? Ooh, said, what is it? Shuffling. <laughs> so, so, all right, you guys, let's, let's ask for some guidance. All right. And here's our first card. Inspiration. So let me hold it. I'm sorry. Let me, I always do this wrong. Okay. Let's try this. Okay. Your angels are bringing you sparks of inspiration to help illuminate your path. I love it. And I love that she's in a cosmic bookstore, right? Yeah. And and I'm going to come back to this card in a moment and really tell you what this means in in terms of our reading. So, inspiration. Mm -hmm. Prosperity. Mm -hmm. Financial abundance is flowing to you through known and unknown sources. Yes. Okay, third card. These are so lovely. Self-care. Mm, I love her. Yeah. Please take good care of yourself and rest, eat well, and make space to receive God's love. That's just what we were talking about. Yep. It's a really beautiful reading. So, so let's first just talk about inspiration. We talk, we're talking about sparks of inspiration here. And, and it's one of my favorite ways to work with the angels. I think sometimes we, we become um, we think we have to create our own inspiration. Mm -hmm. But what I love is I love when the angels bring us sparks of inspiration. Like, you know, it would be so cool. You know what I want to learn? A friend calls up and says, hey, I'm going to go to a jewelry making class. And you're like, that sounds like a lot of fun. Um, something's flipping through on your social media and someone's, I don't know, making the best chocolate pudding any ever or like whatever it is it's like it's a spark of inspiration and it brings with it its own light battery mm -hmm. so in that moment something in you rises up like that sounds so cool <laughs> and what happens with sparks of inspiration is we tend to negotiate with them because it's like it exists in the divine realm and then it comes into our intellect wah wah <laughs> and like I don't know if that's practical, and who am I to make jewelry? And I don't know whatever. And and yeah, what I have found is if I will receive a spark of inspiration as divine, and act on it without expectation, mm. more often than not, something interesting happens. Without expectation. There you go. Right. Because listen, some sparks of inspiration fall flat and disappoint us. It's not as if this is a, a genie in a bottle and whenever you co-create, it's going to be awesome. It's like, you know, to use the baseball metaphor, nobody, you know, hits it out of the park all the time. Yep. But the sparks of inspiration led me to create my Oracle deck, led me to create my podcast, led me to learn mid journey. It, it, it's like, it's, it's, it's this energy field, right? It's this, this um, enthusiasm yes. that can come in. And then prosperity 
Mm. Oh my God. This is such a powerful card. Money, prosperity, abundance is flowing to me through known and unknown sources. Now, listen, I am not going to come here and sing some sort of awesome, exalted thing about money's flowing to you. Like money's money's a tough topic, right? <laughs> like it's, it is. it's, we're living in a 3D world. And, and, but I love that money is flowing to me through known and unknown sources. Yeah. And coupled with sparks of inspiration, it may be that part of your spark of inspiration is you're going to create something mm -hmm. and create a little revenue stream. You know, we I think sometimes when we think about abundance and money, we think about how I earn my living. Well, so if I'm making X number, if I need X number of dollars a year, I need to get that and more. And that's an intimidating number. But what if the angels bring you some cool concept that brings you in an extra couple hundred dollars a month to start? Why not? Yeah. Like prosperity is coming to me through known and unknown sources. And every time I, I use that affirmation, something happens. Like, did you, I don't know if they have this in Canada, but here in the States, there is, each state has their own website for found money. So if you worked at a job and maybe there was a retirement account that you forgot about, yeah. or you had um, a contract with a cable television provider and you never got their deposit back from them when you moved, yeah. that there are these um, government sites where you put in your name and they tell you whether or not they're holding money for you in your name. Wow. It's the coolest okay. thing. Okay. If you're in the States and go, I don't know, there must be an equivalent in Canada. I just don't know what it is. Yeah. We'll have to look but, at it. Um, yeah. Maybe through known and unknown sources, maybe there's a couple hundred bucks for you somewhere and self-care, <laughs> right? Right. So keep the channel open. Yep. Love yourself. Don't, don't build walls of judgment and um, what they're talking about isn't for me. Like, like, Sparks of inspiration, abundance is flowing to me. It doesn't even have to be about Monday, money. You know, wealth takes many forms. Joy, wealth, right? Yep. Um, kindness, wealth. Um, enthusiasm, inspiration, wealth. Like many different forms. Yep. And, um, and self-care. So that's our reading today from our deck. Oh, thank <laughs> Does that you. that resonate for you, Shana? Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. It just, it's, it's, you know, when I was sitting last night thinking, what will we talk about? And I kind of had a few whispers and what about this and maybe this. And, and then I thought, I mean, this is just beyond what I was thinking that, that we would create today. So it's just, it's beautiful. Oh, your good. Deck, your deck is so beautiful. Just the images, the energy, it's the messages. It's just, it's, it's really quite profound. I mean, if you just, it's, it's direct, but it, it's it's very loving. It's just, it's, here you go. And you're right. When we think in terms of, you know, we could do this or we could do that. And um, there was, a, a, there was a, a woman that I'd met years ago, and it was almost like anything that she touched, she, she'd make money with. No, I want wow. 10 people in that class. I'll get 10. I want a new car. I got that new car. I want this. I want that. And, and everything would happen. And then you know, a group of us, we would always take classes because we would want to learn that too. We would think, well, yeah, we would like all these amazing things. And we kept taking class after class, after class, after class, but we weren't getting the results. Oh, And so that I'm thinking when you said expectations, it's like, are we expecting that we will receive good things or, or are we zeroing in that ego part of us? It's just, well, it should look like this this is what I want. And it's like, we almost put blinders on. This is it. And we're not open to the magic, to the possibilities to, like you said, known and unknown. It's like, yeah. okay. Well, and, and listen, we all are living a money myth and a money reality. Yeah. Right. And, and so we can't be dismissive of that. I loathe the kinds of classes when they're like, and we're going to help you build a six figure income. Like, right. In a weekend. I, yeah. I, I just, <laughs> I, I listen, I've bought into that, but I have not at all found it helpful. Mm, no. You know, I have a certain foundation for my life that I am very blessed. And I know not everybody has that. Yeah. But I do believe other people have ability. Like it, it it's it's complicated. It is. And so when I was creating the prosperity card, 
it really has to come from this place of may I open to the prosperity that is available to me and through me. And, and, and I realize that for so many of us, we are absolutely focused on money, which is understandable. That's lower chakra stuff. Am I safe? Can I feed my kids? Do I have a place to live? So I'm not giving you some sort of spiritual mumbo jumbo about that. But I think we've all had that experience of finding, you know, a $20 bill we put in our winter coat that we forgot about, yep. you know, or um, I don't know. It, it's like make a game of it with the angels. And that, that's what I was going to ask about, you know, and it's, it's interesting because it's, I believe I'm a lifelong learner. I'm not ever going to learn all of it. And I'm always shifting and growing. And I used to always joke and, and say, I've got, you know, shiny pretty syndrome. I want this. And I look at this and I look at that. But that's just, that's just how it works. It's just, you know, I get really excited and I have 10 things on the go and I should, I have my angels remind me to bring it back to one. <laughs> let's, let's stay focused. And it's interesting because you know, when we talk about manifesting, we talk about receiving and, you know, there are some schools of thought that are, you know, Wayne Dyer used to talk about, you know, think from the end. So whatever that thing is that you would like, think from the end and, and what version of you would have that thing. So if it's a new car, you know, where are you going and, and what does it look like? What does it feel like? And, and just embody the version of you that already has it. And then you've got other you know, streams of, of consciousness that say, well, no, you just, you affirm it. You just, you put it out to the universe. And, and then like Joe Dispenza says, you have the intention and it goes out to the universe. And then your emotions are what magnetize it to you. And, and then there's the secret, right? Like there are so many different it, ways. Yeah. Yeah. It, it does. And I think we have to be, re and, and, and I think that you are very mindful in how you teach these. So this isn't about, I just mean in general, in terms of the spiritual metaphysics community, yep. we as a whole need to be really careful and mindful that we are not weaponizing these teachings. Yes. Yes. I do not believe that I have the blessings in my life because I have better thoughts than other people. Mm hmm like I lived, I've lived a very privileged life and I have to recognize that. And, um, and, and I love co-creation and I think sometimes in the world of metaphysics and law of attraction, we can get into the genie in a bottle syndrome. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing that we forget to acknowledge is life can be hard and storms happen. And when our, when our dreams disappoint us and when we can't buy that car, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean we've done something wrong. Yes. That it doesn't mean we've done something wrong and we're not doing enough or doing it right. Yep. We are all on a roller coaster of life. Mm -hmm. There is an ebb and flow to everything. What I do love about, you know, co-creation or being reminded of prosperity is there these invitations to pivot within our own consciousness like hmm where can I clean up house a little bit where can I shift a little bit you know in the example of the car um listen if if, if buying a car feels out of reach and it does for so many people like that's a reality yeah. it, it doesn't mean that they're doing something wrong or they're not worthy or they're having bad thoughts or their reality might make that a really, really difficult reach. And, and there are these little things we can do, like begin to investigate different forms of financing. And what do I need to do to clean up my credit? And can I put $20 away a week to say, like it, it, the, the, the co-creation and the manifestation and the sparks of inspiration can sometimes be very practical, yes. <laughs> right? It's true. It's not always sunshine and rainbows and here's your winning lottery ticket. Sometimes it's, I'm going to learn this one thing today. I'm going to learn, I'm going to, I'm going to pivot just a little bit so that I experience life a little differently within my consciousness than I was yesterday. Yes. And something's going to come in, into reach. So, yep. so I love all this. I mean, it's so interesting. We're talking about prosperity because I don't want to make it sound like, and then everyone's going to get a winning lottery ticket because- <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, that that were true. I have been working on that as my solution right? for a long time. <laughs> Hey, right. We've got the numbers. We've got, I can figure that out. I will share that wisdom with all of you. But um, one of the things I will also add to this, I hope I'm not skipping all over Shauna. No, no, no. It's, it's perfect. Wind me up and and you tell me when we're done. Um, No, it's perfect. I was just thinking about this because um, it just started uh, a new cycle of my class connecting with the soul of your business, which is for other soul inspired entrepreneurs. Yes. And I was, I was remembering this. I, I was very successful in the corporate world mm-hmm. and, and I made really good corporate money mm-hmm. and I had benefits and life was good. And then I was guided to leave my corporate job and do this work. And I was maybe, I don't know, a year or 18 months into this work. And I had a session with another psychic. Cause you know, if we do readings, we love readings. Yes. We all want a reading. Give me reading. Yep. It's true. And, um, yep. and yep. it was a friend of mine at the time. He's a lovely man. And and my question was, when am I going to make corporate money again? Right? Like, when was it going to six figure practice? Like, that was going to be the measure of my success, and all my needs would be met. And yep. and he looked at me with such compassion, and he says, you know, you have to remember that you left the corporate world so you could live your ministry. <gasps> And wealth is going to come to you in many different forms yeah. and your needs will be met. I can still just get teary thinking about that. And I was like, part of me was like, that's a terrible answer. <laughs> that's not the right answer. <laughs> terrible. I need money. Come on. This is, I live in LA. This is hardcore. <laughs> and, um, and now here I am 17 years later and he was right in that mm-hmm. my, and my story is mine. I, I, it's mine. And, and I don't expect it to be anybody else's, but all my needs are met. And I have a husband who has a really good job. And so I have a form of stability in my life that I know is not available to everyone, but it's available to me. And um, I feel so profoundly wealthy in my life because of what I get to do and how I get to love people and support people and bring light into the world. And I feel so rewarded. And, and he, he was absolutely right that wealth can come in so many forms. And, and again, I think if for somebody who's unhoused and they don't know how they're going to feed their kids, that is a different conversation. You know, it's, it's like, I want to honor that that's not a, that that people are having very different experiences. Yeah. But I think in a cosmic conversation of talking of prosperity, it's remembering how many different ways that wealth can show up in our lives. Yeah, it is. It's true. I mean, it's uh, somehow somewhere along the line, we've just decided that abundance is, is money is financial, but abundance of health, abundance of love, abundance of kindness, abundance of friendship, abundance of soul connections, abundance of beauty. I, it's just, it's, there's so many different, different variables with that. And it's, it's true. I mean, it's, you know, money brings up a lot of stuff for people. And, you know, it's, I remember someone saying to me once, well, if you're psychic, then why can't you give me the lottery numbers? And I said to her, I said, let's, let's just think about this for a second. If I could give lottery numbers, if I could get lottery numbers, would I, I don't sure if I, I, I don't know if I would be doing what I'm doing. I said, if I could get lottery numbers, I don't know how my life would look, but I don't know if I would step into the greatest version of me if I had lottery numbers. I don't know if that's, if that's meant for me, fabulous. That would be amazing. But if it's that's not part of my journey, then that's okay too. And so this woman, and I, I have permission to share, she had gone to see a psychic 20 years before. And this psychic had said, you're going to win the lottery. And here it was 20 years in. And she said, well, I've never won the lottery. And I said, well, let's just look at this. You're married to the love of your life. Yeah. Mm. You have three beautiful children. Yeah. yeah. 
You have a beautiful family business that's very successful. Yep. You have a beautiful home, lovely friends. You have a beautiful life, an abundant life. And I said, you know, it was interesting because in that session, it just blew my mind. I said, have you not won the lottery in a myriad of different ways? It doesn't have to look this one particular way. And, you know, she said, oh my God, for 20 years, I've been sitting here thinking every month, did I pick the right numbers? Why didn't I win? And maybe it was fascinating, right? And I think, I think, and what I always tell people is, you know, take what resonates and leave the rest. And I'm not your guru. I want to empower you to receive your own information, however that shows up for you. And if something that I say resonates, run with it, try it on. If it doesn't work, that's okay. Right. And it's just, it's, it's finding what works for us. And I just, I love this conversation because a lot of people are like, well, you know, if I I have all these things in my vortex and if I get in alignment, then I'll have all those things. And then they get frustrated and it's almost like they start gaslighting themselves. Well, I must not be doing it right. I'm not in alignment and I'm bad and and I don't deserve it. And, and, da, 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 and it must be in my subconscious mind. And it's like, oh my goodness. And so when we strip it down, what if we could just find that inner peace and joy that works for us and just look for the beauty in our world and let that expand and let the angels, you know, come in and and play in our world. And it's funny, I said to them the other day, um, I always, every Sunday I'll say, Hey, angels load up my week with fun. Let's do this. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. And then I'll get conversations. Hey, do you want to go to this? Or do you want to go for, grab dinner? Or Hey, what are you doing on Friday? And it's just, it's fun. And I said to them the other day, um, I said, Hey, I need more ground crew. I need oh. more ground crew. I, I need more ground crew because I find everybody's got stuff going on. And relationships are shifting and changing. I'm shifting and changing. And it's like, okay, okay. I need more ground crew. And within about a half hour, I had text messages and I had someone call and I ran into a neighbor in the hall. And it just, so I think the greater message or idea around that and around our conversation today is that we're never alone, that we, each and every one of us, we have the inner knowing And when we get stuck, we don't have to stay there. We can reach out to someone else. We can call upon the angels. And as you mentioned earlier, I mean, that they're here with us. That energy is so beautiful and so powerful. And I think that it's it's a beautiful, beautiful message to know that we don't have to do it a certain way. We don't have to. It's not just for some people. It's it's available for everyone. And, and, And the bigger message, again, is to know that we're loved. We're loved until the end of time. Yes. beyond that and that there's nothing wrong with us there's nothing we need to fix that we're just we're beautiful exactly as we are yes i have so so loved our conversation today and thank Thank you you so much shauna what a blessing this this has just been so amazing and thank you to everyone who's joined us team angel (laughs) team angel team angel Right. And now will you tell everyone, let everyone know where they can find you, what what uh, offerings you have currently, what what's what's new and exciting in your world? What's going on? Well, first off, you can find me at my website, illuminatingsouls.com, where you can also sign up for my mailing list. I am on Facebook every day with Illuminating Souls. And I also have a sleep podcast. <laughs> it's called Sleepy Bedtime Blessings because I listen to a sleep podcast every single night. And so it's part angel. So if you like this conversation and this vibe, there's some of that. And then also I do a story time where I either read to you, I tell you stories from my own life. And it's really meant to be a loving, soothing, comforting sanctuary where we could just keep you company for a little while. You know, this world gets so harsh sometimes and sometimes it's just nice to come into a little cocoon of love so that's my podcast sleepy bedtime blessings in your favorite podcast app and then I also teach so I always have a new class coming up about every six weeks or so so again if you sign up for my list you'll find out all about that and I will be teaching a class on how to make oracle cards coming up soon so Amazing. Thank you so much. And we will have all of that information in the show notes so everyone can find you and 
so excited. I'll, I'll order my deck today. I just, I, I need it. I need that deck. Oh, thanks so much, Shauna. And thank you for who you are and all that you do and for the love you shine in this world. You are such a gift and I am so honored and grateful to get to know you and do this work together with you. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I just adore you. Thank you. You too. Thanks. Mm -hmm.